Was it Save the Cat Rides a Novel? Was it my little writer gut finally breaking through to my dumb writer brain? Who knows? Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and I got some interesting mail today. This package, a book shaped package. But before I opened it, I opened if I could hold it up correctly. I open this wonderful letter, which look at how beautiful this card is, okay? Anyways, and in it, it says at one point, Save the Cat Writes a Novel is on its way to your PO box. Thank you so much, Iron Sparks. You were awesome. So I'm imagining that this is what this package is. Now, this is where I confess that for a long time, and I know Iron Sparks, <laughs> I have been a bit of a Save the Cat skeptic. It uh, took over author tube Oh, gosh, maybe like a year and a half ago at this point. It has been the book for so long. And when I was at the Wander Writers Retreat, there was a copy that Jesse was getting rid of and I took it. Now, this is just the plain Save the Cat. And I didn't read it for a long time. And then I'll confess, I haven't read it in full yet. I've read parts, which I have dog-eared that I liked. And I have chatted with Brooke and we did a whole writing and drinking thing around Save the Cat. I've even now slightly incorporated it into my outlining. <sighs> and that I sort of try to do the beats like one sentence each before I do my own bigger outline. Eh, I'm a skeptic, what can I say? But it has worked for so many people, especially the writes a novel version that I'm immensely curious on why this one is so much better. And I'm gonna read the whole thing. That's what this vlog is. I'm going to read it and record and see if anything is illuminated for me. I have a lot of books and various outlining or revision stages where I then re-outline them. So I think I can also use this practically during this vlog as well. That is my hope. Yes. I think that means it is time to open this buddy, which would it not be hilarious if that was not what this book was? <laughs> like if I just randomly got some other book in the mail. Oh, wow, wow that's adorable. They have bookmarks, which will I still dog gear this book? Probably, but. It is indeed Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Again, thank you so much, Erica. I'm gonna be so curious because at the end of this, I might be thanking you even more profusely. I guess. All that's left to do is get started on the reading. The last book on novel writing you'll ever need. Alrighty, Jessica Brody, I am hoping you're about to change my life like you have so many other people's. Why do we care? The Save the Cat beat sheet, not your mother's genres. Why done it? Writes a passage, institutionalized. Superhero dude with a problem. Full triumphant, buddy love, out of the bottle, golden fleece, monster in the house. Pitch it to me, save the author. This is a way better bookmark. <laughs> but I'm going to take a quick break and we are going to uh, do a little park visit. I'm gonna get an espresso and then it's back to reading. Yay, go! Oh, you gonna attack her? Nope. <laughs> Almost a heart. Almost. All right, so I got to the last page of this first chapter. Why do we care? Which it did not work. Why? No? Okay. Just one more attempt, please. Why do we care? Jeez, okay. And so I figure it's a good idea to, as I'm reading this all the way through, do all of the exercises. It starts simple, who is the hero of your story? But we get to a part where it's like, what is causing this problem or flaw? What is the shard of glass? Which is something we covered in the chapter. I actually, when I was reading, had to send myself a text because I had, I, it, a light epiphany. What do you call those? It wasn't really an epiphany. It was just putting something into words surrounding the shard of glass. So this could be revolutionary. Again, I'm only a chapter in and I've already gotten something out of it or at least affirmed something. But really, if this results in me kind of affirming multiple things and being better able to put all of this into words, that's a freaking win, especially because the last chapter Okay, the second to last chapter <laughs> is pitch it to me. So if I can affirm all of these things, if I can make them more concrete in my mind, better able to pitch, an amazing thing. 
Okay, time to do the exercises. All right, geez, so that took me two pages of notes to get through. So what I did is I answered every question. I wrote out the questions in purple and then I answered for Meridian Maps number three and Murder Mystery Tennessee because they're both in various stages of either being revised and re-outlined or kind of sort of outlined, drafted for the first time. So, yes. There's a checklist at the very end of the chapter. Check yourself. And all of mine checked out except for probably this bottom one for Murder Mystery Tennessee. I really just want to make sure I can solidify that a bit more, I guess. It's a murder mystery and while the character obviously needs to grow and the character's going through a lot, having like picked up everything and moved to an entirely new city and avoiding her life back home and trying to start a new life over here, I'm trying to find a way to perfectly word the universal message within that story. Thus the question marks and not the X. One thing I think that's interesting about this book is the way it's set up is the second chapter is actually the beat sheet, which the original Save the Cat took a really long time to get to, but it's also what became famous from that book. So I kind of understand why we're putting it earlier. Just a quick scan of things. She breaks things down a lot more, which, I can appreciate, so it's just gonna be interesting. Plus, um, it starts on page 22 and does not finish until theoretically 75, but then we have all these exercises and questions, so. That's gonna be a long one. I think I'm gonna write out each of these as I'm going along and as she explains the beats, so. Rather than putting them together like this, I'm going to separate them out. Murder Mystery Tennessee is gonna have its own, which admittedly, I already have a version that uses the old beat sheet, so this is gonna be interesting to play around with this time. Will I learn anything new? And it could help me structurally since that is the part that I'm mostly rewriting or reworking is some amount of the structure as we break into the second act, which is terminology that I learned from the original book. With that being said, onto the new chapter. Well, today is a lazy Sunday morning. I have my cappuccino, you know, for the long drive ahead. Really, I just need to pick up a few things from the grocery store, so I have my Wonder Woman mask ready. And I think I'm gonna try a new donut place, support local businesses. It's also National Donut Day recently, and I just, I missed it a little bit. I don't care, I want these donuts, I'm gonna try it, okay. Hearing it back, it sounds like I'm just going out for donuts. And that is a big reason, but no, we got we gotta get stuff. Okay. Let's hit the road. So I wrote down a little bit from Murder Mystery Tennessee. Things I know for sure about this story is that I have a good opening image and the mirror image um, that is discussed in this book. Um, and it's very clear at both the beginning and the end of the novel that we have, like the character's grown and her circumstances have changed and all that. I know I have that part completely down, which is nice. I've also been taking notes on the side here of things that I like that the book says. Like one, a quote on page 24. There we go. She says, my beat sheet always changes along the way as I get into the story and learn more about the world and the characters. And then I think she provides an example at the end of the book with her own beat sheet for some of the novels she's written. But I appreciate that because I think I, not anymore necessarily, but for a long time, 
I had this idea of outliners and that they always stuck with their outline. <laughs> Puppy. <laughs> but it's nice to think that I can take the beat sheet and then just constantly sort of change it. Lean into like the flashlight headlight sort of writer where I go with however much I want and then I reevaluate and then go again and then reevaluate as I'm kind of like shining the light along the way. Anyways, this is turning into half beat sheet creation, half just general note taking. I also like the idea of looking at the like three act structure as separate worlds for the character. So anyways, yes, yes, I'm liking it. Good morning, it's Monday. I had a huge epiphany yesterday in Murder Mystery Tennessee, I should state. This is one of those things that much like with beta readers, if you have multiple beta readers telling you that there's a problem and they're trying to give you solutions, but they're all kind of different solutions. If you can get to the heart of what the problem is, you as the writer can then make the call but like that feedback is ultimately helpful even if they can't pinpoint it. Similarly, the writer's gut. I'm gonna find the freaking video where I talked about this at length, but there was something wrong with the beginning of my book. I had, the murder happened a little bit too late. I was worried I wouldn't have the attention of the reader where I could bring in the murder and my main character. And now, now I have a much better way to do that. Have it figured out. It it's one of those things where it doesn't even take that many changes but my main character is going to be immediately intrigued by the murder when she finds out about it and she's going to have her own reason for looking more into it even more so than before and this is going to really help the dynamic with the detective once my main character becomes an accidental pi and is also like kind of working in conjunction with them to like have that sort of animosity that i couldn't that it wasn't entirely justifying. I don't think I was pulling it off. They have a great rapport and back and forth and it's very fun to read, but I, there was just something that was missing. And all of that tied together, I have the fix. I have the fix. I knew it was a problem already. Would I have come to the conclusion as fast as I did if I weren't reading this because I don't even this is the thing unlike the first save the cat where it truly was an aha for me to think about things in terms of a false peak or a false defeat around the midpoint I don't know that there was any very specific thing that prompted this it was just thinking more over it reading more examples already knowing it was a problem so it was somewhere in the back of my head and Was it Save the Cat Rides a Novel? Was it my little writer gut finally breaking through to my dumb writer brain? Who knows? I also have one donut left because I discovered that uh, my donuts taste really good with wine, so I had that last night too. No. No. I also was struggling a little bit with the theme stated, but now I think I have a really good way to answer that question in the setup. And then I have a solution. The haphazard arrow system is my brainstorming. So it's like I was taking normal notes and then all of a sudden I had an idea. And so then we're all over the page. And then that's why on the end, I went from I like this to figuring out what the heck to do in purple and trace the brain wave somehow. <laughs> you want to see something funny? Zelda! Oh, good job. Oh, good job. <laughs> this isn't a small chair. Either. She got out.
I did it. Bear witness, I did it. Look at this. Okay, so I finished one, two, three, four, five, five pages in order to get all of the beats and all of the notes throughout it. So with the exception of the first part of the story around the setup catalyst when I wasn't sure how to put the murder as early as I'm now going to make it, I don't think I had any big revelations that I didn't know before. I don't even know that I'm reshuffling that many things. What I think this really helped me with was centering where my character needs to be mentally at every single point or every single beat. I also really like books behind me. She closes the chapter by basically saying that sometimes there are exceptions, not that stories won't contain all the beats because ultimately that's what story is and life is. You have to have the all is lost moment in order for the character to change and blah blah blah. But sometimes the beats are shuffled around just a little bit and so I'm really excited because as I was doing this work there were like one or two times where it didn't quite work or the way this has it set up. Like I tried to use this five point finale system. The first three work, but because my main character is ultimately attacked by the murderer, it obviously doesn't quite work out according to her plan. Anyway, so I'm feeling very solid about this. My plan is to type up all of the notes that I made, putting them in order since sometimes I had a little bit of revelation later that I could hint at. Yay. But I think I'm gonna wait until I read the rest of the book first and then I can go back through the beats again and just make any of the notes as I'm typing stuff up, add some things in, yeah. Oh, it fogged up. I'm excited to continue just reading. I'm sure there will be exercises along the way. I actually don't even know what the next chapter is about. And I don't need to do the transformation test since it's just trying to confirm things. I might save this test for when I'm typing it up. Ah, not your mother's genres. 10 genres to fit any story. Yes, even yours. Okay. Also, I made a swan. <laughs> Gotta keep it away from Zelda, she'll eat it. This tiny one uh, chomped on my book a little bit. <laughs> I caught her before it was too bad, but Zelda. <laughs> She knows what she did. It's a new morning, I got my cappuccino, and I am ready to take notes about these different genres. What genre is my book? Let's find out. This chapter is a lot shorter, so I guess you can skip around, potentially. I like again that she makes the point that as yours, if you have a series, not all of the books will fit into the same Save the Cat genres and gives a Hunger Games example. I was thinking about Meridian Maps and I know it would change for each one, but Murder Mystery Tennessee is a mystery. So I think it's gonna be a pretty clear why done it. First category we're gonna go over. But I did also write down that it could be dude with a problem. I also liked again how she tried to reinforce that this whole thing isn't a formula. It's just what works and how stories and human nature combine. Like this is what we intrinsically want. This is the summarization of millions of stories all into like these categories. Not that this is a hard and fast, that's what you must do. I can appreciate that, but ultimately I think there is some out of it that you're still doing a formula. But so far it's helpful, so does it matter? And then finally, what page was it? On 83. She says, writing a novel is a lot like baking. Whatever you make, you know there are certain ingredients you must include to get the outcome you want. If you're baking a cake, for example, you know you're going to need butter, eggs, flour, and sugar. Otherwise, you won't end up with a cake. You'll end up with a salty cracker. But once we have our basic cake formula, once we learn how a cake is properly made, we can start adding our own flavors and embellishments to the recipe. All right, so I took notes through the log line 
through the short synopsis and I am practically through with this book. All I have left is help I'm stuck, some parting words of wisdom and inspiration. And then I think she shares her before and after beat sheet. So I'm gonna wait until I'm back at my computer again and I'm going to type up all of my notes. And then I'm gonna work on the log line and the short synopsis using the formulas that she provides. Again, this is all work that you've theoretically already done. So I think that's why it's recommended to go very much in chronological order in this book. I'm sure the original Save the Cat was the same way, even though I jumped around. Whatever. I will also say that with the 10 pages or so left, I really like the way she wrote her book better. There was something slightly off-putting about the way the last guy wrote the book that I can't totally explain that's highlighted by the way that Jessica did it in this version. But without further ado, let's hit the road, let's get to the computer, let's type this stuff up. Oh my god, I'm almost done. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, he's a slow moving pup now. No. No. All right, so I cannot believe in this weather he wants to be in the sun when there was shade. Excuse me, Doc. <laughs> Tamara is hosting a write-in right now, so I'm going to do some productivity sprints with her, but instead of writing, I'm going to finish uh, reading Save the Cat. This was just part of an experiment. Put some pictures oh. up online. Get her that ad money. And decided there was something in it. I'm wrong. Bum, bum, bum. Kate, hello. You're finishing the last few pages of Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And you're going to type out your outline notes. You know what? I was always told you need to read Save the Cat. You need to read Save the Cat. And I finally got a copy of Save the Cat. And then, like, months later, this the Bryce the Novel one came out, and I was so ticked off. <laughs> it's been, like, it was, like, ten years of being told to read this book, and I finally gave in. And then, oh, now we're going to have a novel? Uh. <laughs> I finished, also these noises with this timer, which you can't see, I'm just now realizing. I'm gonna close up on my foot. Oh, it's so nice. Did you perfectly time it, buddy? What you doing? Oh, we decided the shade was the answer. <laughs> so after doing a co-working session with my friend where I mostly worked on typing up my Save the Cat notes and adding in anything else that I thought of, the only thing I have left to do while I, uh, drink some wine, <laughs> is try to come up with my synopsis. I'm going to follow the exact formula that she has, and it is, compared to the rest of the stuff, indeed a formula. Ooh, that little pop. Look, 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 look. That's enough gloves. Okay. I'll top it with mini. And you know what? Since the puppy is up, I think we might take him on a walk first. Do you want to go on a walk? Oh. Yeah, bud. He's still a puppy. Yeah, oh yeah, you ready? Thank you. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And we are back. I am reunited with my wine. Mm. And it's time for me to read to you the formula for the log line, which again is supposed to be about one sentence. So there's this clear template and then several examples from popular books. So the log line is basically on the verge of stasis equals death moment, a flawed hero breaks into two, but when the midpoint happens, they must learn the theme stated before all is lost. There are abbreviated versions of this. A lot of the time, she uses the phrase on the verge of, but one example from The Martian was like, after getting left for dead on Mars by his crew, mine is going to have after getting dumped by her fiance. Moving across the country on a win, a cyber stalker, <laughs> an amateur cyber sleuth, since once upon a time I named this project Cyber Stalker Sleuth. And by that I mean it is still called that. <laughs> Okay, it took me some time. It's got darker outside. It's real rough. I think I wanna play around with it a little bit more. Um, after 
getting dumped by her fiance and moving across the country on a whim, an amateur cyber sleuth discovers a murderer is killing off contestants of her favorite reality TV dating show. But when she sleeps with the lead and decides to investigate the murder herself, she must learn to merge her online and real life before she becomes the next victim. There's like a little bit there that I could fix up, but it is better than anything I had before. <laughs> I think I can do better. I think I'm gonna try to do better. I actually have finishing up some of this as my list for the whole week to do, so we'll see. But overall, I think it's okay. <laughs> it's long, but a lot of them were long. What's always interesting to me is that the log line obviously can't explain everything. Like this doesn't even talk about her setting off on her own PI journey. And it also doesn't even point to the fact that she starts working with the police department and helping them, nor does it take into account kind of the subset of this why done it, where it's popular to have a case within a case, which is what my story does have, where we kind of merge the two cases together at the end for a surprise reveal, aha but I can't really hint at that. So anyways, it's interesting. Maybe there's a way to hint at that and make this a little bit better. Um, but for now, honestly, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, you know, it's okay. <laughs> if I have a couple more sips, maybe I can convince myself it really is okay. <laughs> I guess my final feelings on this, I was a skeptic. I, you know what, I can retire that phrase. I'm not a skeptic anymore. This is a great book. It'll be even more helpful for me on a second and third reread. I'm excited to see how this affects my outlining, especially for Meridian Maps number three going through number four and number five. Again, it's one of those that you kind of intrinsically know. Like I knew the journey for Annalisa in the Meridian Map series would be different each book. She would have a different theme, a different thing she was struggling with, but then the series overall would need to have its own kind of theme. So a lot of the stuff that's in this book is intuitive, but there's something to be said for seeing it all laid out. And I know she did not like the word formula. Whoop. And whatever, that's fine. She didn't like the word formula. I agree with her, it's not completely a formula, but also it's not not a formula. <laughs> I guess really what I wanna say is thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, Iron Sparks, for sending this to me. I, my camera is falling. I think what I can say is that I fully understand the hype now. I think other people still swear by this more than me, but it, it helped, it did help me. And it's a very quick read. The examples in this book that are given are recent enough that I think per chapter, I'd read at least one or two of the books. And you don't need to have read the examples to get them in the context. So I just, yeah, this is a good book. This is a good book on writing. <laughs> Again, thank you, Erica, so much for sending me this. I really appreciate it. I think that, um, you know, Zelda's little chomp on it will not be the last time this sees some wear and tear if the amount of times I imagine I'll go through it in the future is any indication. But that is going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching it, and we'll see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Why am I really dark? Is that better? You can see my kind of plant in the background. Good job, puppy. <laughs>